When I start a new pre-made neighborhood in The Sims 2, I have a laundry list of things that I do to get started. Degrees, lifetime wants, hobbies, sub-hobbies, secondary aspirations, body hair, makeovers, lot items, ACR, visitor controller, and more stuff. So I'm making this video to kind of give you an insight into how I set up my pre-made neighborhoods to prepare for playing them rotationally. If you've seen my recent Strange Town and Pleasant View Twitch streams, you're probably familiar with some of this, but in this video, I really wanna go into depth on the how and why I do these things, and hopefully to give you some inspiration when you're playing your own neighborhoods. I know that not everybody plays as in-depth as I do. I run a tight ship. I gotta keep up with everything. <laughs> so take what you like from this video, discard the rest, and don't forget to follow me on Twitch where I'm streaming The Sims 2 three times a week so you can see more. The first thing I do when I'm starting a new pre-made neighborhood is go to the Sims Wiki and look up the information for each individual Sim. You can also do this in Sim PE, but I prefer to do it on the Sims Wiki because it's just faster and easier. Today, we're gonna be setting up Veronaville. So I might read, if I'm not familiar with the neighborhood, like I'm not as familiar with Veronaville, I might read a bit about it a little bit, but the information that I'm really after is down here in the family section. So I will open up each individual family member and then I will put them all into a spreadsheet like this. This is a spreadsheet in Google Sheets. Everyone should have access to this if you have a Google account. And this is what my tracking spreadsheet looks like. This is the information that I keep up with for each sim. I keep up with the rotation that I'm currently on, the household names, last name, first name, role in the family, age, which right now it just says elder, teen, adult. I will actually put in a specific numerical age whenever I get there. Uh, zodiac aspiration, secondary aspiration, lifetime want, career, level in their career, job, hobby and sub-hobby, how much is in their bank account, what generation they're in, their potential partner, and any notes that I have. In the notes, I usually put gender preference, uh, hidden tokens, and it, just anything that I need to remind myself of for upcoming rounds. So this process can be a little bit tedious. So to help you out, down below in the description box, I'm gonna put a link to the spreadsheet. This is exactly how the neighborhood is when you first start. So if you would like to track your Sims in a similar way, you can go and get a copy of this spreadsheet from Google Sheets, save it to your own Google Drive, and edit away. I'll also do the same thing for all of the base game neighborhoods. To make a copy of a Google Sheet, you go to File, Make a Copy, and this will save a copy to your own drive. The next thing I do is find the clean template for the neighborhood I'm playing. I use Meet Me to the River's clean templates. They are very well done. And if you Google Meet Me to the River clean template, and then the neighborhood name, it'll come up right away. You wanna go to her Tumblr account, not the Live Journal. The Live Journal ones are old. So you wanna go to the new Tumblr account. It looks just like this. And you wanna download, I'm gonna download as a main hood. You could also download as a sub hood if you wanted to make your own Uber hood, which I don't play Uber hoods. So I'm gonna download Veronaville main hood. To install a clean template, you'll go into Documents, EA Games, the Sims 2 Ultimate Collection or The Sims 2 if you don't have the Ultimate Collection. Then go to Neighborhoods. Then you're going to delete the N003, which is Veronaville or whichever neighborhood you're replacing. And you're gonna copy the clean one over. Now you're ready to play, that's all there is to it. I'm not trying to get into a neighborhood installation tutorial here, but I just wanna say, if you copy over a clean template directly into your neighborhoods file in your documents, it's possible that it might wipe out the storytelling pictures that appear at the beginning of the neighborhood. That doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, you can install this in 003 in your actual program files directory and you can look up more help on how to do that online. I don't want to get into that here. Here we are in a brand new fresh Veronaville. So the first thing I do in a fresh neighborhood happens in the neighborhood screen. I'm going to go to decorations, effects, and I'm gonna put down a skyline and a sky. I made a tutorial on how to install these, so I'm not gonna go into it too much here, but I will show you briefly how I do this. So for Veronaville, I like to choose the rural season skyline, and I will place it all the way in the very corner of the map. The little box has an arrow in it, and you need to line that arrow up with the very corner of the map and place it right there. That's gonna add the beautiful skyline around the town. And then next we need a sky. I like to use the day sky. And once again, you do the same thing. You just place it in the very corner that the arrow is pointing towards. You can place it right on top of the other box. 
And now we have a sky and a skyline. Look how beautiful. Once that's done, I'll load the first family and start getting them set up. I'm not gonna go over the scripted events in this video because I've done that in another video once again, but that is really part of my setup. But today we're just gonna focus on getting the families and the households ready to play. I've loaded up the cat family, which is the first family I'm gonna play in Veronaville. The very first thing I do is look at all of my Sims wants and lock in any very important wants that I want them to keep. For example, consort here has the want to retire, so I'm going to right click on that to lock it in. Tybalt has the want to win fight with Mercutio and go out. I think I'm going to lock that one in. Juliet here wants to go steady with Romeo. I'm going to lock that in. And she also wants to go out, sneak out with Romeo, but I think go steady is more important. And then for Hermia, she wants to have her very first kiss with Puck. So I'm going to lock that in. The reason why I lock all these in first is because what I'm about to do may cause the Sims to reroll some of their wants. And I want to make sure we keep these. Oh boy, look at that face. <laughs> He's got some gaunt cheeks. The next thing I do is give college degrees to the adults and elders in the household who I feel would have a college degree. I look at their current jobs or their career paths to help me decide. For example, Consort is level nine CEO in the business career. In my opinion, he would need a degree to get that far. I also play with a mod called Education is Good by Saijon, which makes it so that my Sims who don't have degrees can't give up, get above level five in any career path. So any of my Sims who are level five and above automatically get a degree. Some Sims under level five, I will also give them a degree. For example, Don Lothario in Pleasant View who works at in the medical career. It's basically just a matter of opinion. I like to give as many of my adults and elders degrees as possible so that we can get the extra want slots for them. And it's not their fault that they were created before university was released. In order to upgrade my Sims to having a degree, I'm going to use a mod called Batbox. This is the FFS lot debugger made into a pretty vase instead of the big Batman box that it used to be by Joe. All the mods and resources that I talk about today are going to be linked down below in the description box. So we'll just put the Batbox here. I still call it a Batbox box even though it looks like a vase. We'll just put the bat box here and anywhere on the lot. We'll click on the bat box, choose upgrade sim, pre-uni, and then we'll select the degree that we want them to have. In consort's case, I'm going to give him a degree in economics because I feel it most closely matches his career path. Once we do that, he will get his additional want slots. He will keep the want locked in that we already had for him and he will roll some more wants. He is the only adult or elder in this household, so now we can move on to the next step. Next up is Lifetime Wants. The Lifetime Wants in The Sims 2 were introduced with the University expansion, so all of The Sims in the base game just have randomly assigned Lifetime Wants that usually don't correspond to their career path or what they actually want in life. Consort has a Lifetime Want to become a media magnate, which obviously is not true because he's working in the business career. Now it's up to you. If you want to go by these lifetime wants and change their career, that's your choice. But I feel like the career that they have or that they roll a want for is more likely what they actually want because these lifetime wants are just randomized. So in order to change the lifetime want, I use a mod called Simblender. There are other ways to do this, but this is my preferred way. Simblender looks like a ficus tree. It's found in miscellaneous miscellaneous. I'm going to place one here on the lot. With my sim selected, I'll click on the sim blender, choose once, cycle my lifetime one. Then I'll check again. And if it's not what I want, I'll keep cycling until I get what I want. Earn 100,000 simoleons would be a good one for a fortune sim. Own five top level businesses. Now this is using the sim blender. This is going to cycle through all of the lifetime wants that are suitable for fortune sims because that's what concert consort is. If you want to cycle through all the lifetime once available, you'll have to spawn the sim modder. And you can do that by enabling testing cheats, shift clicking on the sim, choosing spawn, sim modder and it will spawn a creepy little standing baby here you can click on the baby choose wants and fears lifetime cycle through all lifetime once i don't like using this method because you have to actually press play each time you do it it's like an action that the sim has to take but with the sim blender you can just keep it paused the whole time you can also use the bat box so you don't even have to use the sim blender if you don't want to. I put a sim blender on every lot and I'm just used to doing it that way, but you can also use the bat box and go to want cycle my lifetime want. I'm gonna leave consorts lifetime want to earn 100,000 simoleons. And I'm gonna put this in my spreadsheet now. I'm gonna be updating the spreadsheet as I go. 
to keep everybody's information current. But don't worry, the spreadsheet I'm sharing with you down below will be completely blank except for the information that's available at the beginning of the game so you can choose your own lifetime once and fill in your own information. I only assign lifetime once to adults and elders. My teens, I wait until they age up to adults so that they have more time to find themselves before I choose their lifetime one. Next, I calculate secondary aspirations. I also only do this for adults and elders, once again, giving my teens more time to find themselves before we saddle them with another aspiration. To find a Sim secondary aspiration, I use a calculator that was created by one of my subscribers long ago named Shirley Zhu. Thank you so much, ag much again, Shirley. And I have been using this calculator for years now. It uses the Sim's interest to calculate what secondary aspiration would be best for them. Here's what the calculator looks like, and you can download and use this calculator yourself. Once again, I'll link that down below. All we do is enter in the number of points for each interest. So for example, consort has a 10 interest in politics, eight in crime, three in food, etc. And I'm just gonna go down the line. Over to the right will be the results. And I can see that the highest result is in fortune and he's already a fortune sim. So I would go with the next highest to choose his aspiration, which would be family 20. Another idea that I've been playing with lately, and I have to thank one of my Discord members, Matadi, I don't know if I'm saying your name right, I'm sorry, I'll put it right here on the screen, um, for coming up with this idea, and I was really intrigued by it, and that is if the Sim rolls the highest aspiration in their aspiration that they already have to not give them a secondary aspiration, that this just makes them a pure fortune sim in consort's case. So I think I'm actually gonna start doing that going forward. Previously, I would have gone to the second highest, which is family. Then I'll go to the sim's aspiration rewards and give him his lifetime benefits. I always give my sim the full tree in their primary aspiration. For fortune sims, I'll give them all four benefits in fortune. And then I would use an additional point to give a secondary aspiration. If they don't roll a secondary aspiration, I'll use it in something like needs or work. I recommend setting your Sims lifetime want before you do the secondary aspiration, because if you do the secondary aspiration first, you'll have to scroll through all of the lifetime wants for their primary and secondary aspiration, unless that's something that you want to do. Next on my list is hobbies and sub hobbies. I perform this step for all the Sims on the lot from toddler on up. If you have the free time expansion, all Sims in the Sims 2 have a predestined hobby, also known as their one true hobby. If you click on Sim Blender, go to Traits, choose the Sim, then choose Hobby, the one hobby. The one that's grayed out is their one true hobby. In some cases of the pre-made Sims, I will change this if I feel it doesn't suit them. For example, Lilith Pleasant's hobby is sports, and I just don't think that suits her, so I change it to music. I only do this for the pre-made Sims because they already have personalities, but Sims that I raise up from children or toddlers, I let them develop their personality based on the hobby and other traits, of course. You can also randomize their hobby if you like using the Sim Blender. Hobbies are chosen by the game based on the Sims personality, and I don't always agree. In this case, I really don't see Consort as being a science-y type of Sim. He works in business, he's a fortune Sim, I don't think he's that interested in science, and I don't know what else he would be interested in, so I'm just gonna randomize him. Then we go back to traits, consort, hobbies, the one hobby, and I see that he has rolled fitness. So that's fine with me. He can work on his fitness in his old age. Not only do I choose hobbies, I also use a sub hobby system to make our Sims more unique. I have to give credit to Fire Princess for coming up with the idea for the sub hobbies. This is my own unique spin on it. And I also wanna put Fire Princess's link to her YouTube channel down below. She also makes really awesome Sims 2 videos, so go check her out. To see my sub hobby system, go to my website, pleasantsims.com, then click on rules, then click on the Sims 2 Pleasant Sims gameplay rules. Then in the table of contents, select hobbies. Now you'll see my list of sub hobbies. Because Consort is a fitness sim, we're gonna find the fitness heading. And I see that I have five different options for his sub hobby. So I'm gonna go to random.org and I'm gonna roll a random number between one and five. The result is four. So back on the website, I see number four is cardio, focus on jogging and jumping rope. I'm gonna put in my spreadsheet that consorts 
sub hobby is cardio and anytime he wants to work on his hobby or gain a skill point or just has some free time this is what I will have him focus on. Now I've done the same thing for the three teenagers in this household. Tybalt rolled bass playing for his music hobby, Juliet rolled darts for her gaming hobby, and Hermia rolled blogging for her literature hobby. Now that we have the business end out of the way it's time for the fun stuff. I give makeovers to all my sims. Now, the reason why I do this is because I use a lot of default replacements. As you can probably tell, tell, I have default replacement eyes, hair, skin, clothing. And so sometimes they don't translate so well on the pre-made Sims. So they might need a little help. With Consort here, everything looks fine, except I'm just going to give him some eyelashes. So I use a mod called Closet Gussy Up, which I will link down below. And it allows you to click on your Sim, choose Gussy Up, Change Appearance. And it's basically the same as taking your Sim to the mirror, but you don't have to go through all that hassle. And so for my male sims, I always give them eyelashes. I have a set of male eyelashes by Anva. And so I'm going to give him some eyelashes and he's already got some facial hair. So that's all fine. Those cheeks though, <laughs> those cheeks are really something. Let's hope he doesn't pass those jeans down. And now I'll do the same thing for the rest of the Sims in the house. And I'll show you what they look like whenever I'm finished. In Veronaville, I really like to get rid of this face paint and make them look like more normal Sims. So here's Juliet after a bit of a makeover. Here is Hermia, Tybalt, and you've already seen the glorious contour cap. Now that I'm done with makeovers, the next thing I do is give my male Sims body hair. Because I use a skin that doesn't come with body hair, I like to use a body hair controller by Inky Blue, and I will link to that down below as well. It looks like a crate, and it's called Ma Male Body Hair Controller. It's found in Miscellaneous Miscellaneous. You can just place it down anywhere on the lot. Then, in order to be able to see my Sims' bodies whenever I place body hair on them, I use the Sim Blender, and I go to Appearance, choose the sim clothing and i put him in his swimwear because i know that there won't be any shirt whenever they wear swimwear so i'll be able to see the chest so on the body hair controller there are five sets of body hair you can use and i roll to see which one i give to each sim because i really have no other way to choose i, I end up just giving my all my sims the same body hair if i don't roll so i went to random.org i rolled a number between one and five i rolled the number five so i am gonna put this fifth set of body hair onto the sim and it takes just a minute then it shows up and the body hair hair will stay on them even after you delete the crate you don't have to do anything else this is theirs for life so i do i do not put body hair on my teen sims i wait until they turn into adults so consort's the only one we have to do on this lot when i'm done i just delete the mod and that is taken care of. The next thing I do is spawn both an ACR adjuster and a visitor controller. Now, of course this will not apply to you if you don't use ACR. ACR is also known as Autonomous ca Casual Romance. I highly recommend that you do use this mod because it adds a lot of drama and autonomy to your Sims lives by letting them choose their own romantic partners more often and have just more casual romance in their lives. So if you do use it, um, then you're going to click on your sim, on any sim on the lot, go to adjust, casual romance, spawn adjuster, and then this stack of phone books is going to appear. Now, I don't particularly like a stack of phone books just sitting around my sim's house, so I will go to adjuster, change model, and I change it to a pretty orchid, which I will then put into someone's bedroom, usually the adult of the house. That way I always know where it is and what it looks like if I need to use it. So I'll need to get him another end table to put this on. In there, I'll just put it right in the bedroom like that. Now I'm gonna do something similar for the visitor controller. This is another mod that I highly recommend because it allows you to restrict which sims show up on your lots. This is very helpful for creating things like adults only bars, gay bars, things like that. But my main purpose for it is to keep the NPC matchmaker and the NPC garden club lady off of my lots. I just don't even want them to exist in my game. So before I ever press play, I go to adjust, visitor controller, spawn adjuster. You can also purchase this from the catalog under miscellaneous miscellaneous. Then I will click on the adjuster, choose NPCs, ban garden club lady, NPCs, ban 
matchmaker. You can also use this mod to ban newspaper delivery, mail delivery, um, anything, uh, so many different options, depending on what you wanna do. But I typically just use it for the garden club lady and the matchmaker so that they don't show up on my lot and start annoying my Sims. After you ban the Sims you wanna ban, you can just delete the adjuster and the ban will stay. Oh, and I also put my male Sims back into their actual clothing. <laughs> Instead of just letting them sit here in their swimwear. So I'll go back to appearance, consort, clothing, casual. And that will dress him back in his casual clothing. The reason why I use the Sim Blender for this is because you can leave it paused and it just dresses them automatically. They don't do the little spin. You don't have to press play. It's just an easy way to do it. The next thing I do is write down the amount of money that the household has. Right now we have 80,906 simoleons. This is important because I have certain items that I wanna to add to each lot for realism, and I wanna make sure that my Sims don't actually have to pay for those because I feel like they should be included in every home that exists. And these are thing like, things like light switches, electrical outlets, air conditioners and air conditioning vents, street lights, toilet paper, and several other things. So I will probably make a video on its own about how I set up lots for realism. I don't wanna to go too much into it here because it might get a little tedious and this might get a little long. But anyway, I would purchase all of these items for The Sims, place them in the house how I wanted them, and then I would reset their money back to what it was before. Because I really don't think they should have to pay out of pocket to have light switches and an air conditioner in their house. So of course, now. Now I will save my game, go back out into the neighborhood, and do the same thing for all of the families in the neighborhood. I will also add any of the Ben families that I want to play into their own lots. In Veronaville, we have four different Ben families. Now that is quite a lot compared to some of the other neighborhoods, but I like to move all of these guys in and then set them up as I just did for the Cat family. I add these onto the bottom of my spreadsheet, and in the spreadsheet that I'm sharing with you, these families are already added. And finally, the absolute last thing I do before I'm ready to start rotations is use a mod called neighborhood age correct I use a custom aging system and the game doesn't apply my updated ages to the pre-made sims so you have to run this mod called neighborhood age correct basically you put the mod in your downloads folder along with all your other mods start up the game and load a household once you load the household press play and wait a couple seconds it usually doesn't take too long and you'll get a pop-up that's says age check has checked and repaired everyone in Veronaville or whatever neighborhood. Then if you look through your Sims ages, you'll see that they've all been corrected based on your aging system or your aging mod. I'll put a link to my to my custom aging system tutorial up above and down below if you're interested in working with different age spans. If not, then this part won't apply. It's best to run the neighborhood age correct before you begin playing and then as soon as you've run it, you need to stop your game, save, exit and take the mod out of your mods folder. If you leave it in, it will run the age correct every time you load the game and you don't want that. So take it out as soon as you run it once. And once that's all done, we're ready to start playing rotationally. I play each family for four days because I have four day seasons. So I like to keep everybody in sync. I play them a season at a time. There are many different ways you can play the game rotationally. Some people play for just one day at a time. They play each family for one day. Some people play each family for seven days. That's what I used to do. Some people play for three days, five days. It's really just up to you personal preference, how you like to play rotations. Some people don't even play in order like I play. I have to play everybody in order and keep everybody's ages in sync, but some people prefer to just skip around and play however they want. And that's totally fine. I'm just giving you an idea of what I do. So maybe you can take some of these ideas and apply them to your own game. And so in my spreadsheet, I will keep up with which rotation I'm on. That way, when I come start up the game again, I can just look at my spreadsheet and easily tell which family I'm currently on. So I will put one each time I finish the first rotation and then go back through and play the second rotation, etc. So that's how I set up my pre-made neighborhoods and get them ready to play. I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you do to set up your neighborhoods. Do you go as in-depth as this or do you just jump in and start playing? Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitch and I will see you guys with a new video very soon. Thanks for watching.